it is November the 17th 2015 and I just couldn't leave this capacitor uh, investigation alone I'm going to show you the schematic and everything but I, I want to get this done while I've got it upside down what I've got here is a, a, a 6B4 amplifier one that I've built and shown before on YouTube I love this amplifier I, I listen to it all the time it's replaced my Dynaco and my Macintosh I can't quite explain that why but it does okay now what I'm doing here is I'm going to show you right now see there's a 0.047 right there 0 0.047 0 0.05 however you want to look at it I've got the schematic up over here this is the Acrosound schematic it was built from but what we're going to do is investigate one little part of it it's going to be this capacitor right here that goes it, this is the really classic point where we might find a capacitor that we would say well if this leaks what happens okay so here it is we're going to be looking at this capacitor in that amplifier I just showed you the schematic of now the capacitor that's in it right now is in perfect shape it's a uh, it's a new point 047 orange drop and I've got the meter connected across the grid and the cathode that's where my voltmeter is right now that's where the bias voltage lives between the grid and the cathode not between the grid and ground or cathode and ground but between the two elements of the tube okay so what we have right now is 7.29 volts We got 7.29 and this is good okay we'll write that down like that now what I'm going to put in there in place of it is one of these capacitors that's hanging off right here in kind of a goofy way but it's bad it's one that we determined the other night was bad and I'm going to crank up the voltage here I'm going to crank it up one two three four to 400 volts and we'll watch the current I've got the uh, the meter here on the 50 microamp scale there's 100 volts two three four so it's climbing up ever so slightly it climbs up to right at 500 microvolts because see that's what we got it on the 500 micro amp scale I said microvolts I meant microamps I'm sorry so we have a leakage current of 500 microamps at 400 volts it's pretty much where it settles in okay so we have a bad capacitor turn this thing off before I get shocked now what I'm going to do see it varies a little bit as the line voltage varies ever so slightly now it's 7.38 so we had 7.29 now it's 0.38 and that's still good the amplifier is not being driven, it's just sitting here in an idle state. It is on and powered up and everything. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unsolder that capacitor and replace it with a bad one. Now, one of the things I've already done is I have already run... Uh, both THD and frequency response curves on the amplifier in in good shape and they happen to appear right here let's look at these guys here's the uh, THD now this amplifier is not a 20 Hertz to 20 kilohertz amplifier it's a 30 Hertz to 15 kilohertz amplifier and you can see it's about 0.6 at that point right there at 20 Hertz there's 10, there's, I run at 20, so 15 kilohertz is right out here. So it's, oh, I don't know, it's 0 0.6, 0 0.7 percent. It's not bad. I listen to it all the time, I like it. Okay, and it's a less than perfect amplifier, which is actually what I'm looking for. And here's the um, frequency response, uh, no, I'm sorry, the, uh, yeah, frequency response curve. At 20 Hertz, you can see it's down about a half a dB. And out here at uh, 
20 kilohertz, it's down right at 5 dB. We're not going to worry about the math here. And I don't know what the result of it is going to be. I haven't run it yet. So I'm doing all this real time. So there's its frequency response. And there's its THD. So, I'm going to replace the capacitor and run it at exactly the same power level, which is 10 watts. That's what I'm running it at. And we're going to see if this bad capacitor that leaks 50 microamps at 400 volts makes any real difference at all. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, I don't know. We're going to find out. Okay, we're back. As you can see, the capacitor has been replaced with the bad one. It has warmed up considerably, and the bias voltage is considerably different too, isn't it? It's 4.1. It used 4.1. We're going to call this bad. It did change from 7.3 to 4 to 4.1. It did change a lot. That did make a big difference. We'll do the math later. Or maybe you can just do that on your own time. R equals E over I. See what its actual resistance appears to be, what its shunt resistance appears to be. What it appears is the bad one appears to have a resistor across it like that. Very, very high. Uh, R equals E over I. E would be 400 divided by 50 microamps. I can't do anything without a calculator anymore. So I'm not going to attempt that in my head. But that's what it, what it appears to uh, be as. There it is. There it is. Now it's 4.14. We just wrote it down as 4.1. Okay, now I'm going to flip it over and run all the, I'm going to disconnect these two wires. Flip it over and run the, uh, the uh, THD and, and frequency response on it again. I might add here, I didn't show the numbers for the first one, but uh, they were very steady at 9. And the power has dropped ever so slightly, 9, which is what I was running at. 9 times 9 is 81 divided by 8, which is 10 watts. Now it's dropped ever so slightly at 8 point, but, but, it's, but it's fluctuating quite a bit. This is the same number up here. It's not steady anymore. It was very steady a while ago at like 9.01. Or... So with a bad capacitor in there, it's doing some strange things here. The uh, It just isn't steady. Let's see how it runs. Let me get it started. I don't want to bore you with watching these things, you know, water boil here. But um, I'm running at 30 to 20 kilohertz at 10 points per decade. Whoa! That's not good. 2.5% THD. Oh, this is tragic. The leaky capacitor is doing uh, terrible things. Got to bring the, the trace down here to where we can see it. It's completely off the chart. I didn't expect this. I really didn't. I just didn't expect that. Yeah, it's not working at all, is it? Yeah, we view this amplifier as defective. Okay, I thought it might rise a little bit, but uh, not doing everything right. I mean, it didn't change anything. Yeah, see, our frequency is increasing. 
There's our frequency 5.8, 5.9, 6.9, scanning upwards. Yeah, plumb off the chart, as they say. Well, let's let it complete. Yeah, okay, it stopped. Yeah, that, that's really that's really bad. Okay, let's do a uh, frequency response of it. 20, uh, 30, let's do, we gotta change this. 30 hertz to uh, 20,000. And uh, we're doing uh, 10 points per decade. And we say start in a reference level. Well, actually, what it comes up here the first time, 8.79. That's okay. That's that's what the other one was. It's a little a little lower than the nine, but it's close. Okay, there's our frequency response. That starts out about the same, right there. Might as well watch it run here. Doesn't take too long. Yeah, THD was just bizarre. I thought it would be increased somewhat. But not so. And the other one was down like 5 dB at um, out there at 20 kilohertz looks like this is not going to change so much huh okay so FR is the same FR plot there we go okay there's FR plot for the bad capacitor um, That's where we are now. There's the uh, THD for the bad capacitor. Um, FR plot. There's the bad. There's the good capacitor. There's the bad capacitor. THD. There's the good capacitor. There's the bad one. Can't deny that, can we? Well, that did more for me than I expected. This is the amplifier. I'm going to put it back together, put the other one back in, test it quietly here, make sure I didn't do anything stupid. Stupidity happens. But I use this amplifier all the time. Like I say, I've replaced my Max and my Dynacos with it. I just put it right up here. I use this little uh, uh, Macintosh uh, preamp with it and put it right up here and play it out of these uh, Paradigm speakers. Love it. I'm not sure why I'm so charmed by it. Maybe I just like those uh, those tubes. Well, let me put it back together, check it out, and I'll I'll finish this up. Okay, I put the uh, new capac the, the new good capacitor, the one that I took out back in, taking this one back out, and look, my voltage is back up, steady as a rock. Ten watts, nine point oh one, nine squared divided by eight. Okay, and uh, it's going to give me a good plot. It's going to start out down here, yep. There you go. Well, there you go. I, I can't argue with that. I, uh, I like hardcore data. So, if you've got a power supply, even the power supply out of your own unit, and you can... Um, Remove your capacitors. You can put a voltmeter ammeter in series with it. Uh, measure current flowing through it, DC current flowing through it. You got to get rid of it. There might be one exception. There might be. Uh, Doug and I, I know that most of you guys that watch my stuff watch uh, Uncle Doug's stuff. He has some really good stuff out there. Suppose right here, suppose at this point right here, between these two points right here, there was a tone stack. And this capacitor is good. 
but this capacitor is in your tone stack and you've got this no oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna mess this up really bad uh, and you've you've got all these capacitors off to ground and shunt it across uh, uh, pots you, you know what I mean this is a ridiculous uh, um, version of it but this one is good this one's good but this one right here happens to be the bad one. Let's suppose this is the 0 0.05 or whatever value it might be. So we're not leaking any DC. So we're not going to be changing the bias voltage here. And the shunt around this thing, this is the bad shunt around it, is going to be so high it's going to be, in this case, 400 divided by 50 microamps. I uh, sure wish I had my calculator out here so I wouldn't have to guess at it. That's 4 divided by 5. 40 divided by 5, that's like, it's going to be like 80 mega ohms. It's going to be so enormously high, I don't think it's going to change anything. If you understand where I'm dri what I'm driving at with this. So, once you block the DC, once you're not leaking DC out here in this tone stack part, it's probably not going to change anything. I guess the reason I'm, I'm, I'm adding this in there is that I don't want to, I'm not trying to create a panic that all capacitors should be uh, discarded and replaced. Depends on where it is in the circuit. I'd say in most cases it probably should, but there it is again. See, there's the. There's the THC with the new capacitor back in. There's the new one. There's the, there's the bad one. There's the, there's the good one. Let's see, there's how we ran it once. Let's see how consistent it is. There it is once. It starts out about 0.6 to about 0.9. Oh, uh, this time it ran at about point, pretty close to 0.6 to one. Just checking out the consistency of my uh, equipment here. This one has just been run. This one was run a little bit earlier. So we can accept that. Yep, yeah, that's a bad capacitor. So there you go. Really bad. So think about it. Don't go wild and throw everything away. But if you could actually measure them bad, you probably ought to replace it. I think that would be the wise thing to do.